and that is it 80 prayer which is a kind of big milestone the reason we got this was for the elidness ward you need 80 prayer to equip it which is i believe what it'll say here yeah we can wield it now which is nice because we have one of those and we may use it so i figured why not just do this real quick it's pretty afk so all right i guess when you inspect this it says that you should talk to eblis so we're gonna do that and see if he can make us the scepter all right and that gives us the ancient scepter which is kind of cool it's very small looking compared to the ancient staff it basically has the same stats i believe but the difference is it gives you a five percent magic damage bonus which is really nice honestly when you're doing things like barrage slayer and whatnot for the blood spells this would mean you heal 10 percent more on average which also could be really nice this will be really nice for the inferno i think if i go back there at some point so all right we are dropping our zami spear because we don't really have a need for it i only really kept it because tombs of a Masket at the time and also for corp which we've done 50 kc of now and I don't plan to go back to Corp for a long time. And honestly, even if I do go back to Corp, I can always use the Osmomptons Fang. So one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be dropping the Elder Maul. The reason we're dropping the Elder Maul is because obviously it just really doesn't have a purpose. It is kind of a silly item. It's an ultra rare item from Chambers of Zeric. However, of the three ultra rare items, it is the most worthless and it... It's just very, very unlikely with the amount of time that it has been in the game for it to ever have a real distinct use. All right, and that is going to put us right at 2300 KC at the Giant Mole, which, man, that just feels like so much KC. I do not want to come back here for a long time. I'm hoping this will be the last time for quite some time that I will have to be here. And we got a little over 2,000 mole parts combined, which is going to be a good amount of bird's nests. And hopefully from that we get a decent amount of catentine seeds and other seeds that we are looking for so that we can try and make as many of our super combats as possible with our supplies. I'm so confused. There is a farming pet here and I actually somehow thought this was mine and I got it by accident. But there's no one here like even close by and it's been sitting here for a couple of minutes now i don't know if this is just a visual bug or something like that but well in typical fashion i missed the level but that's 89 farming it's kind of surprising to get that level because that is almost entirely from farming herbs now torsals do give a lot of experience actually and i just made the same mistake i'm pretty sure i made last time i did this which is i forgot to get a pestle and mortar but fortunately it's just a few bird's nests i lost yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and go get that but i'm pretty sure i've made this mistake several times now whenever i start making brews because i totally forget that you have to crush the bird nest that is 90 herb lore which is an incredible level because that means in chambers of Zurich, i don't have to boost or do anything special for the best overload we're at the slayer tower currently killing neck reels the reason we're here is, well, we have a lot of farming to do now that we finished all of the bird's nests, but also I am not going to have enough catentines and quorums in order to finish my torstal stack. Now I've been thinking about what would be the best, I guess, chill way to do this, and killing neck reels seemed like one of the first options that came to mind. Now the problem with this is that they're pretty slow to kill. I don't have a lot of inventory space to work with for food and so I'll have to be banking pretty often to go get more food and potions and things like that. So honestly, it doesn't really feel that good killing them. They're pretty slow, especially because I'm off task. I think overall I can get a pretty decent amount of kills per hour, but this doesn't really feel very AFK and this might take quite a while to get a decent amount of quorum and catentine seeds. Well, 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 after quite some time, we are finally, finally done with farming and with fletching. We're at 90 fletching now, which is nice because that is the level we need to plus five boost and make our dragon darts, which we're not going to do right now, which I know sounds kind of funny, but 
We're not going to be doing that because we don't really have a need to, and if you make the dragon darts, and then if I somehow from some content get any dragon darts, then I'll have two separate stacks, and we definitely don't want that right now, so I'm not going to be doing that, but in the future, we're definitely going to be making them because I would like to actually do some speed running at some bosses and see how it goes. All right, we have wrapped up making all of our super combat bots. Okay, this is kind of random, but we are going to build the servant's money bag. I've been meaning to build this for a long time, but this is a nice way to store a little bit of GP inside of your house. I think it only goes up to 3 million, but we'll just put that in there for now. And this is just nice if you're ever in kind of a weird situation where you need a little bit of GP, but maybe you're on the wrong spell book, and so... If you leave your house to go to wherever your money is, maybe an LMS or something, uh, then it can be difficult or annoying to get back here. So yeah, I mean, ultimately, if you ever just need a quick little bit of GP, this is a nice way to do it. Um, you can also just always like store GP in here without teleporting. So I guess actually I will withdraw out like uh, 1.5 million um, and just leave it like that so that if we ever need to store GP in here, we have some space to do so. And now getting back into Cerberus, starting off strong with a Pegasian crystal, which is really cool to see. But then the silly part about that is that back to back got another Pegasian crystal, which is pretty, pretty crazy to see. And then of course, you guessed it, another Pegasian crystal shortly after getting the back to back Pegasian crystals, just to put the icing on the cake. But then, you know, it wouldn't be a cake if we couldn't eat it too. And that's when we got the Jar of Souls on 534 KC. And if we take a look at the collection log, we have got quite a few items now from Cerberus, but none of them are the one that we are looking for, which is the Primordial Crystal. So we're going to keep hunting for that. After consuming quite a lot of arc light charges and getting almost down to nothing, I have decided to instead use my Osmumpton's Fang because it's still pretty strong. It's not necessarily best in slot, but it's not a bad item either. So we're going to make that switch to save on some charges. And along with arc light charges, sadly, our Blood Fury charges are going pretty quick doing Cerberus. It's not too, too bad, but we have definitely used quite a lot to the point where we're less than 20,000 charges left and I have one last blood shard to use. So now I can put that in my amulet of blood fury to put it back up close to 30,000 charges. And now we have no more blood shards to use and hopefully this will last us until we get the primordial crystal. Well, I'm Turiel skipping and I got a superior crawling hand. I have not seen one of these in a very long time. All right, we got another superior while we are trying to do some Turiel skipping. So could this be, could this be the imbued heart? Could this be it? All right, that marks 1000 KC at Cerberus, which I think makes it my most KC boss now. There's actually just no way that I just got another Jar of Souls. We got the Primordial Crystal. Unfortunately, I was not recording when I got this because honestly, I've been super zoned out while doing Cerberus. And if we look at the collections logged, that is basically the Cerberus log completed obviously excluding the pet another big thing is that we didn't have to use all of our blood fury charges we did use quite a bit on this cerberus grind i think maybe a little over twenty thousand charges were used but we actually still have a pretty good amount of charges left which is really good because we can use that at a few different pieces of content that we'll be looking to do in the future. In order to combine the Primordial with the Dragon Boots, I actually need to have 60 runecrafting, which I do not have. And so I will need to go plus three boost, which is a pretty easy boost to get. So we're going to go and do that. But I am also going to round out the Cerberus KC to 1100 just because it looks nicer. 1096 looks kind of funny. So... We'll just round it off at a nice 1100 for now, and who knows, maybe in these next four kills, we might uh, get another one, you never know. Alright, well we got a little over 400 Wine to Zami while doing that Cerberus grind. 
And so we're going to use those up, and that will be a pretty solid amount of ranging potions that will hold us over until one day we're able to use this entire dwarf weed stack. Originally, I was going to boost for 60 runecrafting because I only needed a plus 3 boost to combine the primordial crystal with the dragon boots. However, looking at desert treasure 2, which is something we're going to want to do pretty soon, we actually need 60 runecrafting and you cannot boost for it. So, I've gone ahead and gotten myself to 60 runecrafting. We're level 59 and we have an arcane book of knowledge or whatever it's called. And there's 60 root crafting, which, yeah, that's kind of disgusting, honestly. With all that skilling out of the way, which was really painful, honestly, we are going to use the primordial on the dragon boots, and this is irreversible. And we get another 400 experience. Nice. But man, oh man, these look so much better than the dragon boots. As iconic as the dragon boots are in old school RuneScape, these boots just, they just fit so much better. They're so much sleeker. And honestly, even just like the inventory icon is a lot nicer to look at. <laughs> I've cleared out some bag space. So this is what it's currently looking like. And I'm actually going to make a few adjustments still. So I am going to be dropping these super attacks. And originally, I really didn't want to do this because I wanted to try and use up all of these torsals, at least the 600 before I dropped the super attack pots. The thing is, getting the super defense potions just feels really, really, really slow. And honestly, I have a pretty solid amount of super combats for now. Super attack potions are not that hard to get, I think, honestly. So I'm gonna be dropping these. I'm just gonna keep the quorums for now because I know quorums are also relatively slow to get for making super combats in the future so i'm just gonna keep a stack of these and you know i'll just plant seeds and things like that as i get them and there it is kc1026 gives us magic fang number two i believe that puts us at over a hundred thousand scales again which is really nice to see well that is another magic fang on kc1028 and that is shortly after the last one which is really nice to see all right and that is 1100 kc i was originally gonna go a little bit further than that but honestly i've got a lot of scales after getting those two magic fangs almost back to back so now i felt like doing a little bit of commander zilliana i haven't really done this boss much other than the original 50 kc for the combat achievements where i got the acb very luckily but it would be cool to get the hilt at some point all right, that was an elite combat task of 100 KC at Zilliana, and I'm enjoying it for the most part. It's actually pretty chill. Uh, oh, I just got another drop for some food, which is pretty big. But yeah, I've actually been really enjoying it. It's pretty chill overall, I feel like, and... I don't have really any complaints. All right, that's the first Godsword Shard that we've got since coming to Sardom and God Wars. I will take it. We definitely need to complete a blade so that we can hopefully get the SGS completed at some point. There's a Godsword Shard 1 drop, which is really nice because that can be combined with the Godsword Shard 2 to save on some inventory space. All right, so first kill of the day, we get a Saradoman Sword, which is actually a new collection log slot. That is really nice to see. I think we're a little bit over the drop rate, considering that the main boss is a 1 in 128 drop for the Saradoman Sword. But that is pretty funny because there is a second Saradoman Sword shortly after, which, you know, always is funny to see. And that is a Godsword Shard 2, which is always nice to see. And that is a Sardoman Sword, but it's from a minion and not the boss, which I am not exactly sure how much rarer that is, but I know it is not even close to the same rarity as you would get from the main boss in God Wars. Well, looking at the drop rate on the wiki, it says that the drop rate of the Sardoman Sword from a minion is 1 in 5,376, 
which is pretty rare. All right, that's another God Sword Shard 2 at 282 KC. And with that, we are going to be taking a break from Commander Zilliana for a little while. Recently, there has been discussions about nerfing the Osmumpton's Fang on Slash in particular, which is where it is pretty good at the Desert Treasure 2 bosses. So I'm going to be moving on to Desert Treasure 2, trying to knock out that quest soon, as well as work my way through Vardorvis to try and get the Ultor Ring before they end up nerfing the Osmumpton's Fang, just because I figure why not, I'm not really in a rush to complete Zilliana by any means, and it will give me a nice quick break from it. 